Peter, I have to ask you, what drew you to documenting the life of George Washington Carver in your book and the work that you've done? It's been pretty much a lifelong process. I was exposed to Dr. Carver through a few of those little juvenile biographies when I was a boy. There's the series of orange books on Luther Burbank and George Washington Carver, and I read them all. And Carver's unusual. He was known for peanuts, and that's fascinating to a child. So many people write reports on him because he's the perfect subject, and his life story is so interesting. Well, in the 70s, when I was in my 20s, I found out that he was a very great spiritual teacher. There are a few sources that give you this greater insight and a few things that you hear him say and you say, this is not just an agriculturist. This is a man who has a higher kind of knowledge. Then my father, who's a writer, asked me if I wanted to write a biography of an American. And I said I would write on George Washington Carver because he'll keep me uplifted and inspired through the whole process. How long was this process? Five years. The Carver papers are, I'm very pleased, on microfilm. They microfilmed them all in 1975. And I would have gone down to Tuskegee Institute and said, I'll take a couple of weeks and go through them, not knowing that there are 87,000 pages of material. Mm. But when I found out I could get the microfilms through interlibrary, I kept ordering them. And it took four or five years just to do the initial research. And I've been to North Carolina and Michigan and, and Tuskegee, and I know 30 or 40 people who knew him. Some people, I would say, value him more in retrospect than they even understood at the time how great he was. Uh, he grows on you. I've never regretted uh, one minute I've spent studying him. Uh, many biographers, when they get into uh, depth in their subject, they peek under the corner of the rug and they find some dirt, but it's not there with Dr. Carver. He was just a really pure soul. What was his philosophy on life? Uh, the golden rule, follow the golden rule, and uh, we would end all war and, and uh, treat the soil well and treat all things well. Find the spirit in every living thing, human beings and flowers and plants and rocks and trees and everything. I also could be called a disciple of Dr. Carver. Watching how he was socially has really changed me mm -hmm. in my way of dealing with people because he was very quiet, right. he was able to keep his privacy when he wanted it, but he was never unfriendly, he was never isolated, he never went into his little tower. It was a perfect balance, really. It was. He was friendly, and, but he could also keep people away when he wanted them to. When yeah. Because you think of all the things he made out of just peanuts, you know. And he, he, he I, 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 it's, it's impossible to talk about him. It's just, he was just amazing, that's all I can say. Many of his innovations, they're using now, and, and he gets no credit for it, you know. Well, that's my job, is to bring him back. Well, bring him back, bring him back good.